Once again, it's time for the news. Let's see what we got going on this week. Uh, golf cart speed, roundabout navigation remain challenges in the villages. Let me read it. Looks like there's been another golf cart crash. Golf cart speed, roundabout navigation remain challenges in the villages. Roundabouts, yeah, roundabouts. I don't see the big deal, but man, people sure seem to have trouble with them. But I will say there's that roundabout of Spanish Springs for the golf carts. It's a roundabout where golf carts and cars not only share that roundabout, which is, is a danger in itself, there's also several exits out of that roundabout for cars, if, but if a golf cart wants to go straight, if he's not paying attention, he could actually pull out in front of a car. And that's probably maybe something that happened. I don't know that. I avoid that roundabout. I know a shortcut that cuts over to Spanish Springs before you even get to that roundabout, and I avoid that roundabout. It's right there by the village's regional hospital. Uh, blame the reason on increased vehicular traffic or maybe the influx of snowbirds unfamiliar with the village's unique rules of the road, or maybe it's due to the graying of drivers uh, with diminishing eyesight or a society that's no longer patient or as hospitable. I'd say it could be all of the above. Perhaps that's why reports in villagesnews.com about cars versus golf cart accidents in the villages have become all too commonplace. There have been six fatalities involving golf carts in the villages in the past two years, said Sumter County Deputy Sheriff Richard Bennett, one of the presenters at the VHA Golf Cart Safety Clinic Wednesday at the Savannah Recreation Center. And they have that uh, golf cart recreation, I mean um, safety class up there. I'm thinking at least once a year, and it's usually around snowbird time of the year, because the snowbird time of the year is also when there's a lot of people that buy homes. It's like the busiest time of the year uh, for selling homes here, January, February, and March. That's the peak season for selling homes. So, let's see what else we got going on. Seventy-one-year-old woman arrested in village of Amelia after crashing open door with chair. I don't know what that means. Um, Seventy-one-year-old woman was arrested Tuesday night in the village of Amelia after crashing, crashing open. Oh, crashing open a door with a chair. Some county sheriff's deputies were called shortly after 7 p.m. to the home of Jim Path after Marion Laverne Plummer used a wooden kitchen chair to crash open the door to an office in the home. She was enraged because an 89-year-old man and a woman had been working behind closed doors. I think I've read this before. This seems familiar. She thought the guy was cheating on her. Yeah, and I remember saying, you know, 85 years old, and he was cheating on her. Good for him. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to something else. Aldi and Lady Lake to close for remodeling employees to shift to Trailwinds Village store. Uh, yeah, they're opening up a new Aldi's uh, grocery store over there at Trailwinds. Uh, they call it Trailwinds Village, but don't be... I'm uh, confused by that. It has nothing to do with the villages. It's one of them places where they're just trying to capitalize on the village's growth and they built this area right on the edge of the villages, just on the other side of uh, uh, Pinellas uh, Plaza. Actually, kind of, well, not actually across from Pinellas Plaza, but just a catty corner down the road there. You'll see it. Lowe's is there. All these is going to be there. There's going to be some other stuff there. So they're going to transfer employees there. Local golf instructor arrested after battle with teenage son over dishwasher. You know, this is stupid. I read this whole story. Let me see if I can find it here. Local golf instructor is free on $3,000 bond after his arrest this week after an altercation with his teenage son over his failure to load the dishwasher. It's more than just that. 
uh, 55-year-old guy. He was arrested at his home, uh, the Continental Country Club, which is across the street of the Brownwood. And I've been over there. It's an older Florida community, older Florida golf course. He arrived home. Um, his 17-year-old son has not completed his chores. We all had chores when we were kids. He was supposed to load the dishwasher. Uh, he began yelling at his son, grew anger. His son uh, just walked away, headed toward his bedroom, and locked the door. He wouldn't want to lock the door on me in my house. The team then noticed that the cable wiring that connects his laptop to the internet was being pulled from the wall. Uh, he had forced the bedroom door open and took the laptop. The team tried to go to his mother, but Rush stood in the path and then tried to put him in a headlock. The report indicated the team bit his uh, father's hand and was able to break free. He ran back to his bedroom. Wrench followed him, pushed open the door, pushed his son on the chest, knocking him on the bed. He grabbed the team's right hand and put him in a wrist lock. <coughs> you know, things kind of got carried away there a little bit, but um, all in all, there was no child abuse going on. Um, and, when, and when the you know, when things like this happen, it's a family matter. Um, it's just, I think it just got totally out of hand and and it's getting to the point anymore that parents can't even discipline their own children. Um, it won't happen in my house. I'll just tell them to get out. They go sleep in a tent in a ditch somewhere. And what else we got? I get rid of that one. I get rid of that one. I should write these down instead of going on my phone all the time. I have to edit this now because it's taking so long to find everything. Uh, a pest control company, a service vehicle, hits a villager on bicycle in a roundabout. Uh, it looks like Massey. A villager riding a bicycle was struck in a roundabout by a pest control company service vehicle. Uh, John William B, I want to say BB, 64 of the village of Charlotte had been riding a giant TRC carbon fiber bicycle at 9.30 a.m. Wednesday when he was struck by a pickup owned by Massey Service Incorporated uh, and driven by 38-year-old James Emery Robinson of Summerfield, according to the accident report from the Florida Highway Patrol, BB's bicycle was westbound on State Road 44A and in the inside lane of the roundabout at Buena Vista Boulevard when he was struck by the Massey service truck. The front bumper of the truck struck the rear wheel of the bicycle causing BB to be thrown from the bicycle. BB was transported by ambulance to the Ocala Regional Medical Center. Robinson was inattentive when approaching the roundabout. The uh, Florida Highway Patrol investigator wrote in his report. Robinson was ticketed on a charge of careless driving. Well, it sounds like Massey uh, is going to pay for that. Uh, okay. Remember the uh, property they were buying in Leesburg to, uh, uh, for villages to build, I don't know, another 5,000 homes or something. They've been trying to get it approved on this and that. Here's another little, little story leading up to that. Villages snags uh, Lake County Economic Director asked thousands of homes to be built in Leesburg. Snags. I like that. Snags. I'm not sure what that means. As the villages prepares to make a major push into Leesburg, a Lake County governmental official is leaving his post and joining the team at Florida's friendliest hometown. Ooh, they must have bought and paid for him. Robert Chandler has served for the past three years as the director of Lake County's Economic Growth Development, which was formed in 2015 by com combining the former Economic Development and Tourism and Growth Management Departments. His career in the county economic efforts dates back to 2011. Uh... Earlier this month, Leesburg's officials took historic steps towards linking up with Florida's friendliest hometown. Well, we'll go on to something else. Let me see what we got. Uh, 
oh yeah, this is about the hospitals. Our his wife in on, for an emergency. They were refusing patients. They were turning away ambulances. Um, it's like we had nowhere to go. You had to go to Leesburg Hospital, and I heard that even Leesburg Hospital were so influxed with patients that they were turning away ambulance service. And I think they all started going to Ocala or Gainesville, which is quite a ways. Um, we don't have enough hospitals here in the wintertime. They do have a lot of emergency care uh, centers. I don't know where they're all at. I don't know which ones are open 24 hours a day and which ones are not. And the problem I have with emergency care centers is that's where a lot of the uh, uh, indigents go. And so you go in there, uh, and, and even though you've got insurance and you might be, have the cash to pay for whatever, you sit there for hours waiting and waiting. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it, it, the hospitals are bad. But anyway, what starts off with a cough, sore throat, or body aches has become a health care crisis as an influenza, commonly called the flu, is causing longer than normal delays throughout the medical community. Whether in securing timely appointments and care at physician offices or in receiving immediate intervention at hospitals throughout North Florida, our two hospitals have treated 550 cases of flu in the past few weeks, says Don Henderson, President and Chief Executive Officer of Central Florida Health, the parent organization of the villages and Leesburg Regional Medical Centers. Traditionally, the uh, ebb and flow of patients presenting at the ERs varies throughout the day. This difference greatly impacts how quickly we can triage walk-in patients and then provide the appropriate treatment. The large numbers of those arriving with flu complaints has created longer than normal wait times, Henderson continued. We recently enlarged our emergency department facilities and continue to hire more staff to help handle the increased demand for care. Uh, yeah, the flu down here, our neighbors had it. Everybody around me seems like they got it. I get a flu shot every year. They can scoff at the flu shots all they want. Only thing I can tell you is I don't get the flu anymore. I don't even get a cold anymore. I haven't had one in years, and I'm around all this flu epidemic here, and I have had no problem. So that's just my personal opinion. Do nothing, things happen. Actress Megan Boone pledges her TV character will never carry an assault rifle. Eh, I'm not even going to get into that. That's political shit. I, I could care less. But in case you don't know, Megan Boone on the Blacklist um, uh, show on TV, that's Jennifer Parr, which is well, the Morse developer family here. That's her daughter. Uh, let's go. Let's go on. And there's one here about bad parking in the villages. And we do. We got so many terrible, terrible people that can't keep their car between the lines. It's awful. Uh, not everybody, but it just takes a handful to make it just stupid for everybody. I'm going to try to show you some of these pictures that I think you can see. Because some of these, I, I see what's going on, but you, you probably wouldn't notice. Uh, well, here's one. And this happens in all towns, not just here. Let me see if I can turn it sideways and get a better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you see that picture? If you look in front of that store, see all them golf carts in that car parked right there? That's the fire lane, people. That's not a handicap pickup zone. That's a fire lane. And and they're they're blocking the, the, the sidewalk that goes down to the road that levels off. That's how they get wheelchair access here. And people are just parked right in front of it. They get out of the car. They walk in the store. They just don't care. Uh, oops. Let me find another one. Something you can see. Pretty, There's some pretty stupid ones on here. It's almost like they feel like they, they don't have to follow the law in Florida. It's like, who cares? They wouldn't want me to be a meter maid. What we used to call meter maids. I would write him a ticket with a smile. Here's two more. See that red car? Way in front of the white line so that the car that wants to park on the other side can't get his in his parking space. Look past that red car. See that white one? 
see how the white line that divides the two parking spaces is the car is parked right in the middle of it goofy look at this white one see that stripe of area he's parked in I don't know where people get their driver's license you're not allowed to park a car in any striped area and there he is that's for a handicapped van door that has a uh, lift on it that's that space for the lift he decided he's gonna park there he didn't care two hundred dollar ticket uh, let me see well see I see what's going on on these pictures but it's hard for you to here you go look at that golf cart right in front of that red car now that ain't the way we park that red car is in his, his space properly the other golf carts are parked properly and this guy comes in there and just kind of angles in there like that to be in everybody's way lazy and stupid here's another one see that car parked in that striped area in the handicapped spot they just here you go there you go that's what I'm talking about see that they can't even get between the white lines they just pull in there and just get out. Goofy, goofy, goofy. Uh, anyway, we'll get beyond the, the parking thing. What else we got? Uh, Bill, you take a bus trip to Tallahassee. Yeah, they went up there to uh, protest... Um, gun control uh, after the uh, children at the school 17 of them I think were shot and murdered by that young punk and um, I think uh, whoever's taking care of that boy should be brought up to the firing line um, how'd that happen? Or just how'd that happen mom and dad? Where were you? So anyway, uh, I think they're wanting changes in the laws and things of that nature I don't know how to turn out but uh, they have a right to protest, and uh, they, they I don't know how many buses they took up there, but uh, apparently it was a major protest. Okay, see what else we got. Calumet Grove residents still barred from their homes nearly two weeks after sinkhole discovered. Yeah, those two homes that's got the damages. Uh, those people are still barred from their house. The, the houses are still deemed um, uninhabitable. Residents of two homes in the village of Cayman Grove remain barred from their homes since February 15th, discovery of sinkholes. Red stickers remain on their homes in the 1700 block of McLaurin Terrace, but residents were reportedly allowed back in to retrieve items. The red stickers indicate the homes are not habitable. Let's see if I can get this picture to blow up a little bit. I'm going to show you a little bit of the damage to this house. This, is, this, sink, this house is taking some major hits. You really can't see where the sinkhole is, but here's what I want you to concentrate on. You'll see the cracks here, down here by the tree, here, up on the house, and back there around the doorway. That's a stucco block built home. And I hope you can see those cracks in that house. Um, that house has got major significant structural damage so I don't know what's going to happen there we'll keep an eye on it and what else uh, a section of multimodal path a multimodal path is a golf cart trail uh, during the village's growth somebody decided that we're, we're not going to call them golf cart trails anymore we're going to make them multimodal paths that way People can go out on their skateboards and rollerblades and uh, walk on it and uh, ride their bicycles on it. And it's just an accident waiting to happen. Somebody's, and they already happen. I mean, golf carts around here get hit by cars. These golf carts are going to run over people. Uh, what else? Let's get rid of that one. Whoops. Hit the wrong button. Oh, this happened uh, yesterday. The uh, I think it's the uh, I know it's the Americans United States largest American Legion membership is here in the villages. Um, it might be the largest in the world. I'm not sure, but anyway, they got a game they play over there. My neighbor goes over there and he buys uh, tickets to it all the time. 
Um, it's a lot of money they win. Uh, it's it's a card game of some kind. I don't understand how it works, uh, but it's a card game, and um, it and it's been rolling over because nobody's been winning. And a villager won yesterday. They drew drew the I guess the right card out of a hat or the name or something. See, a villager won two hundred and twenty two thousand two hundred nine dollars in a Queen of Hearts drawing Tuesday night at American Legion Post three forty seven in Lady Lake. William Crum of the village of Pinellas, that's just uh, on the other side of me, was the lucky winner and was at the post at Rolling Acres Road and County Road 466 when his name was called. Uh, good for him, 222000 Boy, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, have that extra money. The way it works, and if you're not there and, you, and they draw your name and you win, then you get half of the money and the other half goes into the, the next game. They roll it over. Uh, but he was there. And I do know that today's that they uh, are drawing uh, the winners, if there is a winner. You have to be down here to see it. But they, they got a pretty good sized piece of property over there. You can't, you can't get in there to park. It is full, jammed full. So anyway, he won 222000 bucks. Good for him. Okay, what else we got here? Get rid of that. Yamaha issues a major recall over faulty brake cables in golf carts. Okay, Yamaha issues major recall over faulty brake cables in golf carts. Yamaha has issued a recall for 161,000 units to be brought in for repair. The hazard is that the brake cables on the golf carts can fail, posing a crash hazard. The recall includes model years 2015 through 2018. Mm, no, I bought this in 2014, so I actually bought the golf cart, I think, in 2014, so I don't believe that's me, but you can buy 2015 vehicles in 2014. I have to check, see if that's me or not. Uh, 2000, the recall includes models 2015 through 2018, the gas and electric powered golf carts, personal transportation vehicles, and utility vehicles. There have been 285 reports of brake cables failing. No injuries have occurred. So, if you have a golf cart that falls into that category, call down to the village's golf cart store and um, get in there and get it fixed. It's free, it's under uh, it's a factory recall. Oh, remember that guy that had the argument with his son that I said it got to the point where a person can't um, discipline their own children, you know, as long as they don't get carried away. Uh, here's, the, here's the update on that. Golf, local golf instructor enters plea in case, ordered to stay away from teenage son. A local golf instructor has entered a plea to charge of domestic battery in connection with his February 19th arrest after an altercation with a 17-year-old son. Uh, he has retained attorney Nicholas Stack to represent him in his case. The judge has issued a no victim contact order in the case. That means arrest cannot phone, text, or email his son or go within 500 feet. So I'm assuming he, if he's got an attorney, he has to stay away from him till they go to trial or go to court of some sort or another. All right. Well, kids, I think that's about it. All right. So today, I think me and my wife are going to run over to Finney and take some video of this and that. I don't know what what's over there, and. Uh, we're going to see if um, we can come up with uh, some answers and some uh, video to show you what's going on over there. So until then, my neighbor's out there doing yard work. I like to watch other people work. Till then, I'll see you on the other side.